and welcome to an epic edition of ARG Presents. Why is it epic? I'll tell you why. Because this is our year in review. Dun, dun, dun. I'm your good buddy, your good pal, Amigo Aaron. Joined by the luckiest man on God's green earth. I give you the Brent. How's it going, man? Don't touch me. Don't <laughs> Wow, he's a little surly this week, folks. But let me tell you something. He's full of whimsy and mirth. Why is that, Brent? I'll tell you why. Because we're going to fire it up with the year in review, Brent. Are you excited for the year in review? I am. I am. I can tell. You're really fired up. So, you know, I want to go over. You know, we've done a lot of shows this year, the Brent. I know it's something. <laughs> something around 51, 52 of them. You know, and so I, I actually took the time. I want to go over a few of these things before we get into the nitty gritty here. Because this All is going right. to be a show. It's going to be a lot of numbers thrown around here. No, they're not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of numbers here uh, this episode. And I wanted to talk about the shows we did. All right. So, and we're not going to go over every show we did. Okay. But I classified our shows into four categories this year. All right. The four categories are... Kind of like the four horsemen. That's right. Of the apocalypse. I think you're familiar with them. <laughs> so, the first category, consoles or computers. Okay, these are computers or consoles that we never touched before this year, and we never did any other shows about them, okay? Uh, these. This is a short list. The Commodore PET, the Acetronics MPU-1000, the Apple II GS, the, two, the J2ME phone... The Nokia Engage, the TI-84 calculator, or TI calculators in general, if you will. Uh, the Sharp MZ-700. The new one, or new one, if you will. And the Super A-Can. Okay, that was all the new stuff we did this year. A con. Okay, now, the second grouping I've got yes. are themed shows. These are shows that have a theme, usually come up with by our fine listeners and viewers. Just to go over a few of these, uh, board games based on video games, right? Games involving us. That was a good one. Roguelike games banned from YouTube. That was Boats. Remember that one? Wrestling games, horrible arcade ports. You get the idea. Right, right. Then you've got, this is what I like to call the second time around, or sometimes third time around. These are, cat these are uh, machines that we've covered in some capacity, Okay. Uh, and I'll go through these. The Sega Dreamcast. We did an episode on that. We covered that one before. Uh, the uh, It also grouped arcade machines and boards into this category because we've covered arcade machines in the past. The Psycho SH uh, arcade board. Brazilian Sega Master System games. Uh, the Video Pack Odyssey 2. NES bootlegs. Uh, uh, arcade hacks. Bandai Wonder Swan. The C64 exclusive. Japanese arcade exclusive light gun games, Neo Geo, C64 cartridge games, and the TI-99 4A. These are the various pieces that we've had at least a second, or in some cases, a third look at. All right. And then there were three episodes I like to refer to, or two episodes I like to refer to as the Freak episodes. These were Live from Boat Fest, and then the follow-up, The Games of Boat Fest. The Games of Boat Fest, Brent. Now... I just went through that whole list there. Yeah, I don't know why you did that. Well, so people can understand, what well, this is what we did this year. Hey, well, we're it's the year in review. And so I thought what might be fun, uh, Brent, is for oh, us, I know, I'm having a great time. Well, it's for us to sort of go through and pick our faves and our low points, pick our favorite episodes, favorite machines. Uh, and I thought we would start, first of all, before we get into that, do you have anything you want to talk about as a, as a uh, in the year in review? What did you think about the last year of this show? It was okay. That's all you got. Yes. Can you get into a little? Can you give me a little more? Did were, did you feel like it was a, a fruitful year? How, what did you think of the of the ca various categories? Did they light your own fire? Were you disinterested? I think we grew as a channel. Uh huh. Because we both put on weight. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, <laughs> that, that's horrible. So. Well, no, I see. I have I have things to talk about. Yeah. But I'm going to do it during my. My top fives, baby. Okay. All right, five. I, I'm ready to get into it. You're so, holding me back. Well, I know. It's because I we, it's because we got stuff to talk about. Now, with all that said, uh, we have we went through and picked out, made some picks here that I thought might be fun. So we're going to start right here, Brent. Let's start 
Uh, and what would you like to start with? Do you want to start with your bottom five or your... No, or, no okay. Uh, go ahead. You, you've you never like? done this before, have you? Well, we've done it hundreds of times. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry What to would hear you that. like to do? Let's start, Aaron, with your number five favorite game that we played on ARG Presents okay, this I've got, year. Okay, I've got these listed in the top five here. And I, 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 the order's tough. But I'm going to go ahead and list them in the order that I've got them. All right, so not my number five game was actually one we just played pretty recently, and it was a moon mission on the TI, the TI game. You remember that one? I think you picked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Are you trying to refer to Moon Mine? Moon Mine. Excuse me. Moon Mine. Moon Mine. This I was a good game. also picked Moon Mine. What did you like as about my this top, one? My fifth top game. Really? So we both have this number five? Yes. That's astounding. What did you think? What was the, what attracted you to this one? This had elements that were very unique. Uh, for the TI-99, a, a, a computer that didn't have a ton of games and definitely didn't have a ton of original games, this was a standout in, in both gameplay, uh, its high score, fun, the fun factor overall, and just its innovative uh, controls. It's innovative gameplay. Uh, it didn't do much in the realms of graphics or sound, but it didn't have to because it had everything else so well packaged. Yeah, I, I, you know what I liked about this <clears throat> game? It made me want to keep my high score, and it was so it was fun, simple fun, but not too simple, and also not too generic. They put some wrinkles in there. Uh, I, I liked I liked what the guy did, and especially yeah. after your story, how it was like his one was, it was like his first game. Yep, great stuff. I, it's funny that we both had that number five. I but I agree wholeheartedly. Would you want you want to go ahead and give me your number four? No, no. Okay, what now, do you want to do now? We, we need to reverse the gears a little bit. Okay. Now I know you picked your five bottom games. I did pick right? my five bottom. So games. I only picked three. So right. why don't you give us your Number five and number four worst game. Okay, I will go ahead and give you my number five right away. And it's Samantha Fox Strip Poker, Brent. Uh, and listen, I love Samantha Fox. She's double hot. All right, but this game was double crap. It was a generic, low-end poker game. Uh, they did okay with the digitization, but I think the CC4 could have done better, if I'm honest. Uh, I thought this was a dud, a big old dud. Well, I agree with you that I, that this was a bad game. It did accomplish one of the two things it tried to do. The, right. the one thing it tried to do was be hot. It failed. Well, I mean, it's, I, you know. Eh. No, it failed. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, the second thing it tried to do was be poker, and it at least kind of did that. Yeah. So I did not have that on my it bottom hurt, It hurt games. me to put this in there. I'll be honest, because I love Samantha Fox. She's such a wild dame, as Sog says. Uh, but yeah, that one, that game was no good. So, so what did you have at number four, Aaron? Number four, this thing wasn't that hard to figure out. This is just a few episodes back from our religious category. And this is the game. I, it's probably I, both the games I picked were the ones I picked. This was the uh, Odysseus story. This sucked. I didn't like Jill of the Jungle, but Jill of the Jungle was way better than this. It had more functionality. And this was a reskinning of that game. It's funny, this religious games episode, I really, I sort of enjoyed the episode, but the, this game, I, these DOS, these DOS run around and jump games, I think stink. I don't like them, and I never have. And so this one, I put in my number four least popular game. Now, I can understand that. I, I, however, this also avoided my my evil gaze, my bad So you didn't pick gaze. either one of these in your mm. bottom three. Okay, nope. okay. You're running the show. What do you want to talk about next? Well... We've had so much negativity. Yeah. The, the the double pounding of bad games. Yeah. Let's go number four positive game, Aaron. Okay. Something good, something sweet, something you enjoy. Now this one, this one came out of nowhere for me, if I'm honest. And this was Silent Steel for Windows. Uh, it's so, it was on our submarine games episode. This was the uh, this was the laser. This is like the laser disc type game. It was the cinematic game. And I'll tell you why I put this on the list as, as one of my favorite games of the year. I did a stream where everyone got together and we played this game on stream. It was so much fun. We played this and we played it's uh, one of the sister games. And this game, for, okay, listen, it had everything going against it. 
It's an FMV game. It's a Windows 3.1 game, you know? But actually, the plot was good. The acting was good. It was fun. And I had a lot of fun playing it with the, with the people, you know? So I put it on my list because these are the games I, I had the most fun playing at the time. And I have actually went back to this one a couple times to try it out because I never beat it. So I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Aaron, my number four game uh, that we played this year was actually the only one on the list that you picked. The, what's that mean? The only one. In- the only one on my list that you had a hand. Really? In. Okay. Which one was it? At number four, episode two fourteen. Yeah. I have Chuck Norris. Bring on the pain. Listen, I'm going to agree with you on that one. Uh, in fact. It's higher on my list. Should I just go ahead and say what it is on my list since we both picked it? No, we'll wait. We'll wait because after this, after we get to the top three, the meat of the list, we're just going to go in line. Listen, Chuck Norris, go ahead. T- tell us what you liked about this one. <clears throat> First of all, again, you, you can't ignore the system that these things are playing on. Uh, and this, for a J2ME game, which is an old-fashioned cell phone where you, you had just your dialing buttons for your controls. Yeah. Uh, worked wonderfully. Uh, the graphics are crisp. The humor is there. The, the playability is there. I had a lot of fun playing this. Uh, when I had... It, they could have phoned it in. <laughs> they could have phoned it in right to JM2, J2ME land, and they didn't. They actually put a little bit of effort into it and it showed. You know, this one really was a surprise for me, the Brent, because I thought these phone games were going to be garbage, double garbage. Yeah. And this right here, you're right. They did everything you could ask in a game like this. I spread this all over the place. I'm like, listen, you got to try this game because I thought it was so much fun. Uh, and it's they varied the gameplay uh, they just it had all the personnel you would want in a Chuck Norris like tongue in cheek Chuck Norris game. Yeah, I love this game. It will be back because it it is uh, up on my list. That's for sure. Now we've sort of cut through the honorable mentions, Aaron. Okay. Now it's time to get into the meat of potatoes. All right. I want you to take me from your three, two, one. Of your best games of the year oh, list. My be- Let's go to the worst games first. That way we can get to the best games uh, last. Okay, so uh, uh, my number th- number three on my worst games. Remember, this is counting towards the absolute worst. Correct. Uh, another game I picked, unfortunately, uh, Brent. Uh, this was uh, this one was called uh, Anita Atushi FMW. This is the uh, Famicom wrestling game from our wrestling game episode. Uh, this stunk. It was also, un- and I like fighting games and wrestling, and I like Onita, who was a, a deathmatch wrestler in Japan and may still come out of retirement now to get to do it. Uh, and I always enjoyed his wacky work. But this game, and I like the idea of a wrestling game presented as a fighting game. Sounds good. And I liked some elements of this game, but it, the execution of this game was crap. Double crap. And it was disappointing to me because I expected more uh, and I'm surprised that you've released something like this in Japan because Onita is well known in Japan. You probably wouldn't want to put your name, hook your name, and be the lead character in a crap game. So I put this one at number at number three in my crappiest games. All right. You want to talk about your number three? Um, yeah, we can do that. This is going to be the definitely the most controversial thing of the day. All right. Uh, episode two thirty four, where we are talking about games that define a genre. Arkanoid. Arkan wait, you're kidding me. No. Arkanoid made the list? I cannot express to you and anyone out there listening. Yeah. How much I hate Arkanoid. I mean, but come on, that's a it's not a bad game because you don't like it. No, this is bad to me, man. Bad to me. I and again That is controversial. It seems like every year I have to play one of these games that I know I don't like. <laughs> And you're just forcing me to do it. It's like you have a, ah. it's like you have a little uh, 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 timer, and every time it goes off, it's like, oh, time to make pl- Brent play something he hates for you know three or four hours. And I'm sorry, Aaron. I don't even think I'm not even saying Arkanoid is a bad game for everyone. I absolutely hate breakout games. 
and Arkanoid is a breakout game, and I just was so sad to have to play it again. That's that's not getting over with the, the local chat here. They're, I, not, they're not down with that. Sorry, man. Uh, I, 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 I cause them like I see them. At least, for an example, the wrestling game, I didn't know it was bad until I played it. Well, I knew as soon as you picked this game yeah. that I was going to have to go and play a game that I don't like what, playing. What if you had a proper dial or even a proper machine? has nothing to do with it. That is you, you could set me up with the arcade perfect spinner and everything. I just do not like this type of okay. game. Okay, all right, okay. Well, should we should we keep going with the bottom five then? Absolutely. Let's all go right. ahead and wipe those out. My number two worst game of the year. I rated this one number two because it broke my heart. It, that's why. Because this should have been, this could have been a contender. But instead, it was garbage. Hot garbage. It came from the stupidly named episode Burger Games. And I'm talking about Super Burger Time. What happened here? What? How did they botch this one? Burger Time's awesome. You know, and so you've got colorful graphics. You've got a colorful tune. You've got wacky characters. And then they made this game stink. Yeah. And the thing is, it goes on forever. Tons of levels, tons of variety, all of the crap. How do you botch this one so thoroughly? They they had a lot of practice. I mean, I don't is know. this game worse than Z Doom on the TI calculator? I mean, from a technical standpoint, oh, yeah. no. But oh. but I mean, the thing is, that's a calculator. I, I I have expectations for a calculator for the Ace Tronics, but when it comes to to a sequel to a beloved arcade classic, and this is what you give me, that you have failed on a grand scale. This was my number two. Worst game of the year, the brand. Aaron, my number two worst game of the year, coming from episode ARG Presents 210. Yeah. Uh, games that make no sense. We've got Wrecked, the Psychedelic Adventure. This, uh, this was a game you picked. Oh, yes, I picked it. Holy cow. Talk about a game that was unplayable. It is amazing to me that they uh, 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 put this in a box <laughs> and expected people to want it bad enough to give them money. Um, the concept here, I think it could have worked. And I think it, even though, I, in my opinion, it had nothing to do with trying to, trying to uh, put out an anti-drug message. I, think, I don't think anyone believes that's what actually was going on. No. Um, but I think if they wanted to have an anti-drug message and they clean this up, that the concept is there, it could have it could have succeeded in that goal. But as it is, what we got, holy cow, it was poop on a stick. You know, it's funny you should mention this one because I didn't hate this one as much as you did because I liked the concept of the game was kind of neat. The drugs get, did different things to the screen and stuff. Yep. I mean, it was it was low end DOS garbage. It Don't was get low me end wrong. DOS garbage. But it wasn't. It didn't make my top five. Let's just put it that way. It was it was bad. It was bad. But it wasn't the dirt worst. Also, this this was this game also made YouTube hate us for a while. What? What? Oh for, yeah, we got in trouble. Did we get in trouble for we that? We didn't one? get officially in trouble, but it hid. Uh, this episode from a bunch of people's streams. Oh yes, because I had drug references in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you're right. I'd forgotten about that, but that's absolutely true. Um, so I guess I'll go with my worst. This is my least favorite game we played this year. I tried to color this thing with a with a a, a, a colorful brush. Something tells me we're both going to pick the same game, but I couldn't do it because it was so crappy. This is from our C sixty four exclusives episode. And this was a little game I like to call Shirley Muldowney's Top Fuel Challenge. Yes. Shirley Muldowney's Top Fuel Challenge. Listen, when I saw this thing, because listen, we don't, I like the idea that this is Shirley Muldowney, but Shirley Muldowney was a big deal in the 70s. She was one of the first, she was the first big time lady funny car racer. She had a name. Uh So I like the fact that, and you know, that stuff draws me, as you know. I love that stuff. And so, when it was time to pick something for this, I was like, man, i got to get me some of this Shirley Muldowney. And the thing is, there's the, this game has a lot of stuff you can get into. The problem is, it's just, it's, there's nothing there. There's, it's just, a sh- uh, uh, the gameplay is just shallow. It's, the, it's not even a kiddie pool. 
You know, it's like the, your basement. There's like about an <laughs> a foot, about an inch of water down there, and then that's it. There's no there's no substance to it. It's a real letdown. And by the way, don't let this sour you on Shirley Mo Down. It she, wasn't has. her fault. It wasn't her fault. This dud got released. This was my worst game of the year uh, by a long shot. Well, I don't know. That was it. Wasn't about to say by a long shot. Uh, but it was it was bad. It was disappointing and bad. That's what I didn't like about it. Eric, I thought it had a lot of potential. Let me express my displeasure for my pick for worst game that we played this year. Yeah. And that would be Shirley Madani's top fuel dragster <laughs> there it is. Yes. challenge. Don't leave it me was, hanging, brother. It, it was it was that bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not surprised. Holy by that. cow! What a piece of garbage. Yeah. This was one of the few games we played this year that I was just like. What is going on? Why can I not do anything? Why can I? Why is it when I start the game, I blow up and die? Yes. Absolute trash. Uh, I don't care how many sprinkles you put on top of it. I, I, I Have you ever played Dragster? It. Remember the old for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred? That game was very similar in the fact that you can, if you don't know what you're doing, you can just play, play it and it instantly explode. But that game paid off some perseverance. Shirley Modowney hates you and everyone you ever loved. Yeah, yeah this was that was a, this yeah. was by far, in my opinion, by far the worst game we played. Sorry, this year. sorry about that one, man. Just for fun, if I look over my list of these games, I picked one, two, all the bottom five games I picked. I, I think I, I can't remember Super Burger Time, but I know I picked every other you one. You picked Super Burger Time, so I picked all the bottom five of mine were games that I picked. So yeah, that was <laughs> that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. So where are you, you want to go ahead and finish up our top five then? All right, Aaron. Let me let me grab the reins here. All right, go ahead, please. And you don't even have to change episodes, Aaron. You okay. can just skip a little bit. Okay. My favorite top third game that we played this year, Commodore 64 Exclusives, Rags to Riches. Yeah, it was an interesting game for sure. And did this get a slight bump? Because of the absolute trash that it was up against, perhaps. <laughs> I didn't think of that. But perhaps. Yeah. It looked great in comparison, that's for sure. But I actually played this game almost to completion. I tried to complete it. It is Well, there is no end, but there, there are points where people say, okay, you've done everything. And I thought this was a unique-looking game. Yeah. I thought this was a unique playing game. The concept behind it was appealing. Uh, you you know you starting out with this penniless bum and you do what you have to do to to get money, turn it in bottles, and yeah. eventually you're up there getting harassed by the IRS, trying to pay your taxes repeatedly, mugged over and over. The guy that came up with this, I don't recall, he didn't do. He's sort of a mystery man, as I recall, and he didn't do anything else. Like I mean, this he was really thinking outside the box on this one. I got to give him credit on that. So my yep my. Uh, Top third game that I played this year for the show was Rags to Riches. That one narrowly missed my list. I will say if I if I picked the number, if I picked a, a, another number like a, a number six, if you will. No, 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 no. You either hate it or you love it. Well, pff, I can't sort of like no, it. There is no sort of loving. Okay, fair enough. I guess I'll go ahead with my number with my number three. All right. As I'm trying to find it here on the, on the list because I didn't write down the uh, show number. Uh, but my number three was on our Girl Games episode, if you can believe that. And I, I, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, I'll be honest. That's going to be episode 219, Aaron. Oh, very good, very good. 219. Brand. Let me find it here. Uh, that episode was, by the way, scored quite nicely uh, for us. But I'm going to pick, uh, and I, I can't believe this, but I played it so much that i got to pick it. Dr- Nancy Drew, Message at a Haunted Mansion. <laughs> I love this game. It had an awesome plot. <laughs> I can't help myself but enjoy it. I didn't even play the best version of this game because I picked the GBA version of it. Trust me, when I picked this game to do on girl games, I was like, you know, I don't want to play this. Boy, do I not want to play this. And then I used the interface. And I'm like, man, I don't want to play this. But then it just hooked me. And I thought to myself, I want to see what happens. And when I got to like the third or fourth chapter, I was rolling, brother. Uh, I couldn't help myself. And I thought to myself, I looked over the list. I'm like, what did I spend a lot of time playing and even play after we finished yeah, shows? Yeah, that's the, that's the and, key. And, the, and this game, Nancy Drew, Message in a Haunted Mansion, 
God, I hate to even put it on there. I feel like a dork, but I, I loved it. And I loved, I loved the Girl Games episode, and this was a lot of fun for me. So, yeah, I'm gonna have, I had, can't help myself. I had to put it in there. You definitely enjoyed this more than I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think it's more your era of game, too. Well, no, I mean, it's really, it's not nothing like a game I would play. That's what makes it so strange for me, because, I mean, it's nothing like a game I would normally play. So, you want to go ahead with your number two? Aaron, my number two... Little arcade, little arcade things going on here. All right. ARG presents 229 Japanese arcade exclusive. All right. We got the one, the only, the game I had never heard of until I looked it up for this episode, Steelworker. Oh, yes. This was quite a game. This one also barely missed my list. I like this. <clears throat> it's just because it was so hard. That's the reason I didn't put it on my list, because I was horrible at it. This was a game that I, I, I lucked into finding. Yeah. I lucked into finding it. I, I mean, I, I looked. I always looked for my games, but sometimes you just get lucky. And uh, I played it, and I would imagine if you had the actual arcade con console uh, control panel in front of you, that everything that I didn't like about it would have gotten better. It would have, because the, the it had a little bit of fiddliness with the controls, but I'm not going to blame it for that because of the the uh, uh, emulation I was using it on. What it did was it took a basic concept, a basic Lemmings-like concept before Lemmings existed, <coughs> yeah, and put it to an arcade puzzle game that was a ton of fun. Yeah, how this hasn't gotten ported or converted to a console is a ba or an old computer, like because any computer can run this, and yeah. newer computers can run a jacked up version of it. I mean, like really work on the graphics and the sound. There's a lot of potential in this one. Yes, uh, and I think this one was. I mean, listen, you were on fire. That was a that was a great that was a great pick. And that was your number two. That was my number two. That's a that's that's an excellent choice. Now I'm not gonna. I we number two for me. We already talked about it, uh, and so I'm just gonna bring it back to the forefront, which was Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris, bring on the pain. I love this game. We I've talked about it already. A great game. A huge surprise for me because I'd never even fooled with these J2ME games yep. forever. You you had. I had not. I dabbled. And I'd had other people tell me that there's a lot of good stuff, and I was like, meh. Because I remember having one of those old flip phones, and the games, all, all my games sucked. Crappy version of Uno or something. They were garbage. Hot garbage. And when I was looking through the list, because you know I like to pick stuff on the basis of how cool the name is. Yeah, dumbly. That almost always screws me. Yeah. It very rarely turns out. But Chuck Norris, Bring on the Pain. I picked that exclusive because I like Chuck Norris. And that was a winner. So that was my number two of the year, Brent. Now, Aaron, since we kind of spoiled your number two pick, why don't you go ahead and tell us your number one? Well, my number one actually appeared in two episodes this year. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was in our uh, it was in our uh, 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 Odyssey Two slash Video Pack episode, and then it came back in our Games Featuring Us episode. And so, I'm sure you could probably guess what it is. It was uh, it was Shay's Maxim. I love this game. I'm not just saying that because I'm in this sucker. Uh, when Happy Coding put it together for me, but I mean, this is a straight up great game. Yeah, it was a one. Of, it was one of the most fun games I played this in, in the past year. And what I liked about it was it was a lot, in some ways it reminded me of the TI game, the Moon Mine. It's a simple concept, superbly executed, and and the thing that really got me was uh, the, on the uh, on the Odyssey two and on the Spectrum to a certain extent, these are great fast paced games that yeah. are served up on a, what is a really old school system. Yeah, you know, when we came across that, because we also I think you did Mouse and the Mouser or something like that on that episode, which is also pretty good. But this one here is one of the rare times we both were like, "This is the this is good stuff." Yep, and it's a tribute to Happy and his art guy. Who that they could see us play this game, have we never heard of it, and take and look at it and recreate it on the ZX Spectrum, and then very kindly put us in it. Yes, uh, which was nice. It was of incredible. Them. And I, I, so when I was doing my top five, I was trying to be legit. But which of these games have I played the most this year? And I've played this one by far the most, the ZX Spectrum version. I've played the most. 
So I got to give Happy credit. So that may be a cop out. I don't know how you feel about me. No, that number one. no, no. Uh, and, and I will, I will uh, talk about in that in detail a little bit later. Yeah. Um, I want to get to my number one game, Aaron. And uh, this is actually a very recent one, episode two forty two. Okay. Uh, when we were looking at C64 cartridge games, and I pick Diamond Mine. Yeah, this is Not Diamond Miner, Diamond Mine. This, Aaron, took takes so many concepts of video games and gets so much stuff right. Yeah. Uh, it is one of the few games I've played probably ever where... Dying isn't the worst feeling you get when you play the game. When you are trying to pull those diamonds out of the mine and those critters eat your tailing two or three yeah. and you lose all those points, that, to me, was more devastating than when I just flat out died. Yeah, yeah. I, I This was a real good find. Multiplayer. Uh, a lot of depth to it. It's it's one of those games when you look at the name, you're like generic. Yes. And even when you sort of look at the screen, you're like, eh. And then once you play, you're like, oh, oh what do we got here? You know, yeah. you got you got something. Uh, and this one, it was a little, it was kind of complex, really, in a lot of ways. Uh, I like this game. This is another one that would would, would be certainly be my top ten. A lot of fun and an excellent choice. I, I think really. Those were all good choices. When you look at your list of your top five, how many of the top five are games you picked? One, two, three, four. Four. So mine, it's, mine is four as well. So we, <laughs> we, we picked our one. The one, uh, the one that I didn't pick was Moon Mine, uh, which was the one I didn't pick. Now, you know, before we move on, because I want to talk about our favorite episodes, we did get a, a submission from one of our uh, listeners, which is Michiyami. He's here in the chat with us as well. And he wrote down that he said the game of the year to him had to be Steelworker, as picked by the Brent. So he agreed with you, the Brent. I'd never great seen this game. early Tato game before, and it was a great find. The worst game has to be Shirley Amon Downey's Top Fuel Challenge, picked by Aaron. What the hell was that game about? So it's amazing. We were in lockstep with Mitsuyama there for sure yep. when it comes to picking these games. Now, I don't know if you actually included this on your list but I did some additional lists, and I'm going to go through them if you haven't. I actually picked out my favorite, least favorite episodes. Did you do that? I picked out my favorite episode and my least favorite episode, but not okay. a, not a, a I, list I did of. top five. I'm not going to go through and, and fish all these up, but I will just mention my, my, my top five favorite episodes in descending order, going toward my favorite. Right. The number five, Games That Killed Midway. I had a lot of fun researching that. And then I had a lot of fun playing those two games. I, to say, I thought those were, oh, Sub-Zero is horrible. Uh, my set, my number four favorite episode this year, uh, which is a fairly recent one, TI-994A, the Moon Mine episode. That was a great episode. Yep. I love the TI. That thing always does us good and solid. Absolutely. And I always had a good time. Number three favorite episode for me, Games for Girls. I mentioned it earlier. I like that episode. That was a going outside your comfort zone sort of episode, you know. And also the title, Games for Girls, because that's a title that sort of it's kind of going away because yeah. I think games have a more general interest. I think, I hope, you never know. But the fact that those games were specifically aimed at ladies. Yes. And then, but that, and of course, one of those games made my top five. So clearly the gents could get involved in those as well. My second favorite episode, J2ME Phone Games. Again, this was a something I never heard of, uh, this, this gimmick. And so when I've delved into all these games, I'm like, my God. What a setup in the history of the J2ME and stuff. Yeah. That blew my mind. Now, but before you go over your number one, yeah, let's hear Because I only have my top and bottom. Right. Let's go ahead and do your worst four. Because I don't, or your worst five. I don't wanna I don't wanna leave this list on a bummer. I wanna I wanna leave it on a high. So let's go ahead and do your worst five. So my bottom five, starting out would be the Ace Tronics MPU one thousand. That game that didn't do anything for me. I did like the research a little bit, but it wasn't it didn't I wouldn't enjoy it that much. Number four, the new one. That thing was tough to run games on, and we only we literally played the only two games we could run on it. The funny thing about the new one is we're gonna if things go correctly, we might be playing four player new one at Boat Fest. Someone's yep. gonna bring a new one. So yep. now number three game uh, assist, or thing I least favorite episode NES bootlegs. The NES bootlegs thing stinks. 
It stinks. And I was stunned at how crappy it was. And I thought the games we picked weren't that interesting, if I'm honest. Huh. I didn't like the NES bootleg episode. And then... I disagree with that, The number the two least favorite games involving ARG, and I'll tell you why. I felt real like I was being very conceited when we did that episode. I felt like a sort of an arrogant jerk because we picked games that were about us. I saw always... I felt... made me feel bad. Now, I, we were highlighting... I still great felt, developers. I still felt bad. Idiot. I still felt bad. So what was your least favorite episode this year? My least favorite episode this year, serious games that are funny. Mash ColecoVision and Hitman Windows. That was your least favorite one, eh? Yes. Now why did you why did you pick that one as your least favorite? I, oh, Aaron, I've done a lot of soul searching on this. Yeah. As I was <laughs> grasping, trying to get to the top, the surface yeah. of my flooded basement. Yeah, yeah. While I was shivering, trying to get the heat work. Yeah. While I was sitting alone at work, waiting for the next customer to burge in. And I, I decided something, Aaron. Yeah? I don't like funny video games. I don't think you're a good judge of them either. If I'm I, honest. I don't like funny video games. Because Battle Chess and Hitman were your two funny <laughs> games. So when you think of the... Pantheon of hilarious games. Hitman and Battle Chest don't spring forward. You're horrible at that category. Well, this the category was serious games that are funny. Yes. So they were supposed to be funny in like an ironic way. Um, but I just don't think that video games, for the most part, outside of if you do story-based video games, yeah. like your uh, 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 Treasure Island type games, I don't think you can grasp the type of humor that I enjoy in a video game very well. Yeah. There are some funny characters, like Portal, GLaDOS, that's the type of humor that I like in a video game. Yeah, And those type of games are so rare so when I had to go and look for games that weren't supposed to be funny in the beginning, yeah, and then that were kind of funny, and we ended up playing Mash, which sucked. I like Mash. It wasn't that bad. And Hitman, which I it, I had to go out and buy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I found a uh, uh, copy of that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. I don't do that. So it was um it was my least favorite episode to research. It was some of the, my least favorite games to play. Yeah. And, and for that reason, it was just, it was not say, a fun episode for I will me. say this. You sort of rescued yourself here. Okay. Because the fact that you paid for Hitman is unintentionally funny to me. <laughs> oh, there you go. Find, find that amusing. Listen, I don't think either one of us hit a home run on that one because MASH is a show that's funny but unintentionally serious or vice versa. Yeah. But, I mean, I, we tried. That was a tough category to to... To come to grips with, if, I, if I'm honest. Yeah. So, uh, my least favorite episode that we did the whole year, I got to go all the way back, Brazilian Sega Master System exclusive games. I had all kinds of trouble finding one of these, and then I, just, it didn't, I didn't enjoy the research on that one that much. It was just not one that I was really... I mean, it's, I don't hate it, you know, but I will say it's not one that I, it did it for me. And it was one of the earliest episodes we did this year. Yeah, I believe Brazilian... It was like the uh, third episode of the year. That would have been ARG 201. And we picked a couple... The games were just unsatisfying. Uh, uh, Baku Baku, which I played way more than my game. It was not any great shakes, frankly. I mean, it was okay. And then uh, the, the Woody Woodpecker game I played had really bad controls. Yeah, it was really so, bad, yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was a real bummer. So that that was my least enjoyable episode. It doesn't mean it's like the worst thing we ever did. It just wasn't, because by God, we've done much worse than that. I'll tell you that right now, but it was not it was not Black one and I, white games. Let's play pinball. Now, idiot. Just for fun, uh, I, I've got a couple categories here at the end that we didn't really vote on. These are just... Things I thought might be interesting to the listeners and, and viewers at home. All right. All right. Before we get to our biggins. What do you mean until, until we get to What's our... the biggins? The episodes that we've enjoyed the most. Number oh, one yeah. I forgot about lists. that. I already skipped over that. So I looked to see what the top five most viewed videos we had on YouTube were for the year. Okay. All right. I mean, that really isn't a metric of anything, but okay. Well, because, you know, I, I've, I've 
I kept it going. So these were the most viewed episodes on YouTube this year, just for future use. All right. Okay. And if anybody went in the chat and wants to just type in a guess for number one, feel free. So the number five most viewed, I didn't put the numbers down, I just put the rank. Number five, the Sharp MZ700. Fifth most viewed. Fourth most viewed, just came out a month or so ago, TI994A. We've always had good luck with TI, haven't we? Yes, we have. They've been kind to us. Um, number three, Apple 2GS. Which, by the way, that was a hey, that episode got me to go out and buy an Apple 2GS, which I blew up <laughs> and repaired. Uh, the number two most viewed game on uh, on or most viewed episode on YouTube banned from YouTube. So Rob O'Hara guessed Samantha Fox. You were close. That was number two. <laughs> now, do you want to guess without looking at my? Console? I already know what it is. Oh, you already look. According to YouTube, and keep in mind we're a podcast, so YouTube you can't go by. But we'll get to that. The number one most viewed game on on YouTube, and I've seen some guesses here in the chat. Wrestler wrestling from Dryerland. Uh, sorry, incorrect. The number one most viewed uh, of our shows on YouTube this year, Games for Girls. Yep. It got over. It, in fact, it was not even close. It was the number one by a long shot. Now, just about at, like 50%. Along those lines, since we're a podcast, I thought it would be fun to see what got over on, at, uh, in terms of downloads of the podcast. All right. So, the audio version of the show. The audio version. All right. Now, we have two feeds. Okay. But I, so I'm going to give you an overall winner. But on our feed, now, get this. The number five most listened to on Anchor, Brazilian Master System exclusive. Number four, sequels different from the original. Huh. Uh, number three, the Bandai Wonder Swan. Weird, right? Number two, the Psycho SH2. Weird. Huh. And the number one, Games for Girls. So there was that was oh. one place. Now, we also have a feed on the Amigos Network. And I looked, I combined, I looked at those. They were different, by the way. Uh, the number one uh, let's do show on there was the Dreamcast episode. But when you add the numbers together, the number one listened to downloaded podcast of the year was, uh, this was pretty much far and away, Games for Girls. So Games for Girls, right across the board, was the biggest show we did last year. And, I'll, and, and also, I'm, pl- I'm pleased by that. Because it's nice that show that I enjoyed doing uh, was uh, was so well received because sometimes, like for example, I don't have, recall having great feelings about the Psycho SH2, and that one did pretty good. So there you go. See, we we take different approaches to that. Well, there you go. The thing on the wheel spins. I do the episode. I don't care. Right? I don't. I mean, I, I hope people like well, it. I'm just but saying. I, I, I want people to be uh, informed about the things out there, not necessarily listen, entertained listen. Yeah, by yeah, my yeah, yeah, malarkey. Yeah. So what do we got left here? <clears throat> I believe the only thing we have left there is our number one top episode of the year. Okay, great. You want me to go first? Well, this one you can go first if you'd this like. This may yeah. have been the very first episode we did the whole year. It was it was right at the very beginning of the year, and this was one. Now, listen, this is sort of a cheap one. I'm not gonna lie, but I enjoyed it so much that I had to put it make it my number one for the year, ahead of uh, games for girls and for phone games, and it was. Episode 203, bam, board games based on video games. I had so much fun uh, for this one. I understood uh, that it was outside of our usual fare, but you came over and we had this crazy rig on the table, and it actually somehow worked, and we streamed the games before we actually made the episode. We used the footage from the episodes. It was I enjoyed it so much. And I also enjoyed the fact that both games sort of held up. Yeah. I liked Pac-Man. It was all, Pac-Man's always a, a great one. And I also liked Berserk, which was a lot of fun. And so this one was, just because of the unusual nature of it, the fact that it came together in a nice way, this was my favorite episode that we did. Episode 203, uh, Board Games Based on Video Games. Very good, Aaron. Very good. Thank you. You like that one? Yeah, Didn't that was a good top one. Five, but... No, well, I only did top one. Oh, okay. Uh, however, you don't have to go far to find my yeah. number one episode I feel we did this year. Yeah. Uh, and that would be ARG Presents 204, the video pack slash Odyssey 2 games yeah. for Mouse and Cats. And, and it was, <coughs> first of all, two terrific Game, yeah, for completely different reasons. And surprising too. Yeah, yeah, they were they were great games for completely different reasons, and it 
allowed something to blossom with happy coding and uh, porting that to other systems so other people got to enjoy such a great game. It was a nice feel, that's <clears throat> and, for sure. And then for him to to uh, uh, so kindly make us characters in that game, it was a... it That episode began a very long journey to get to uh, uh, such a, a nice, clean uh, uh, resolution that I have to say that was my favorite episode of the entire year. You know, it, what this reminded me of is on uh, on Amigos, myself and the boat, ha- we're getting into uh, uh, Odyssey 2 games, and we, we met a friend named Gary James online, and he he was he poured it over these games. He even put me in boats, little figurines. He did one for uh, Amigathon. And I, th- I was like, man, I was so I was so impressed that someone had the kind of jack it would take yes. to do a competent port of, like, Killer Bees, for example, or, t- or Terra Hawks. And then Happy and his crew, I got to give them credit for porting this over because we knew Happy had the jack because I'd been playing. I met him because he was uh, he was uh, getting the word out in his asteroids for the ZX. But we take all that out of it. We both love the Odyssey two Absolutely. slash video. Pack. I mean, that's that's a a heartstring puller because yeah. it, it was what we both grew up on. And the fact that we ended up getting two, and we wanted to make this a video pack episode. And the fact that we found two real fun games to video pack. Because we don't know Jack Squad about the European scene on the on the Odyssey too. Yeah, and so it was. I I'd say this was a, a great episode as well. I enjoyed this. One. I mean, in terms of my enjoyment of it, yeah, I really had a good time uh, with that one. So uh, I think that's the long and short of it uh, when it comes to the year in review. Now, before we move down the line here, uh, the brand. Uh, again, I asked you this earlier. So I want to ask you again. Do you have anything uh, when you reflect on the season? The highs and lows, and uh, keeping in mind that we, you know, we we're, uh, you know, well into the two hundreds here on the on the episodes. Uh, how do you feel that the last season stacked up against the previous years of ARG? Did we was it better I, for games? Did you ever think about that? I, I don't think those are comparable. Um, I think we are doing better at finding unique experiences. Um, the the one side of it that's kind of dried up, and it, it's a it's a, a, a symptom of our own success is oh, yeah. we can't we don't get to explore as many new things as we once did. Yeah, and I will think I do think that is something that was at the peak of what ARG really was. Yeah, but I think we have transitioned a little bit, and we are bringing uh, uh, some games. That would otherwise have fallen to the wayside and never would have never been thought about by a single soul, and kind of spotlighted them and said, "Look, there are good games out there that you've never played. Come and play them with us." Well, I mean, of course, a lot of that's just straight up luck, and uh, this this show also has a shotgun like approach in a lot of ways because I mean, we don't know what we're doing. We literally have no idea. The wheels are shoot, it spins, and then we've got a couple of days to come up with a game for it. Sometimes the games are surely more downy. Sometimes there's shades maximum. You can't. You never know. And even when you pick the game, it's a crapshoot. You know? Well, no, I don't agree with that. For me, I try to pick stuff that was uh, that was uh, something I haven't played, and just hope I get lucky. You know, it's the way it is. And it's- I am very different. I, I try to do some research. Uh, some weeks I have more time than others, and I think that shows in my game choices. Um, but, but sometimes you have to get rushed into a bad choice. To find out that the game you picked is really good. Well, we have two different philosophies when it comes to picking games, but we've got one philosophy for when it comes to getting these games and consoles and computers fixed, don't we? We do. Bam. It's our good buddies at Retro Rewind, brother. Now, let me talk about Retro Rewind for a minute, the Brent. Uh, Retro the- Rewind is a heck of an outfit. We love those guys, and the reason we love them is they take your ancient systems and make them whole again. And when you're a show like ARG Presents, you don't, you can't stand by and watch these uh, classic machines uh, wither and die. Even if it's a piece of crap you don't like. You got no Pong machines. I mean, you don't want to see it go. And these things can be present, uh, can be prevented. And sending your uh, old classic Commodore machines, your classic Coco machines up to Frank at RetroRewind.ca. Frank, 
is 100% grade A when it comes to repairing your products. He's got decades of experience at the highest level. I'm talking featured on TV levels of high. He's an outstanding repairman, but he's not just a guy that sets around repairing stuff. He will sell you your cap kits. He will sell you your diagnostic tools. He'll sell you the things that it takes for you to repair your own systems if you are so inclined. Absolutely. He also has a, a myriad of different parts that can uh, set you up to make your machines better. Do you need an SD solution? Frank can get, take care of you with Kung Fu Flash for your C64. He can take care of you with the SDC for the Coco. Do you want to make your Amiga run faster? He can take care of you with an accelerator for your Amiga 600. Trust me, to make a top five list of Frank services, you'd have to extend it to about 30 because they're all top shelf all the way. Uh, I want to say that we just, uh, you know, Frank just re-upped with us for another uh, go around with his sponsorship. We couldn't be happier. Absolutely. Because Frank's a great guy to work with, and it's also great to be able to, to pitch for a guy that we believe in and have seen firsthand well, and his if we, efforts. If we didn't, we wouldn't do it. We've turned, even our little crappy show has turned down advertisers in the past because their product stinks. Sorry, Manscaped. That, that is not something you have to worry about <laughs> with Retro Rewind. That's right, brother. Now, something we do have to worry about is spinning that wheel and making the deal. Let me get our flashers back up here. Bam. Now, Aaron, I don't know what's added to the wheel. I don't know what's been taken off. I you don't have any idea what's going on? No, let's just spin it and see where we end up. All right, that's the, that's the spirit of a new year right there. There can't be anything bad that could possibly come up on this thing. We've got... And the winner? Let's hear it. I think we've already done this. Europe only releases Super Tech Boy. Well, it sounds like another round of European only releases. Didn't <laughs> we just do that a couple months ago? We'll do it again with special parameters. Brent, what are the special parameters? What console that you would normally find in the U.S. are we going to play European exclusives on? You get to make the pick. You have to find European exclusives for the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo, wow, that's not gonna be an easy task. Not a big seller over in, the, uh, in Europe, uh, the Brent. So, boy, you know, I will say as we come to a close on this edition and this year, uh, I sure hope everyone that listens and watches the show has a great year. I hope you've had a great holiday. Uh, we appreciate everyone that sticks with our little wacky show. We're in there plugging along, brother. Uh, through thick and thin, we try to get it done, and uh, we are looking forward to another fun year of, of good times. Because this show is about fun. This is my I come in here to have a good time, play some wacky games, and enjoy myself, despite uh, this guy. But I even hope you have a good year, the Brent. Don't and touch I me. I pat you on the back. You did a good job this year. You brought some good games to the forefront. Now, what would you like to say to me? I can just get this. In would your you get throat? that out of my oh. throat? Talk to the people. Bye, everybody. Have a good year, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed the show. A special thank you to Devin Styles for our vector style graphics and Bartbit for our amazing music. Would you like to help keep ARG spinning? You can do so at patreon.com slash ARG presents. Just like these fine folks. Dryerlet 17. The Ron Garut. Templar Mar. Z9, K9, Chris Munch, Jerry Dennington, John Dykeman, Retroology, Retro Smith, Air Shack, Texas Foosballer, Sundown, O'Raw, Super Tech Boy, David Terrence, Mr. B, Roushy, Graham, W. Vetke, Dave, Velociraptor, Bernhardt Lucas, Steve Rathmussen, Anthony Jarvis, Bitter Blitter, Pajaco 6502, Kevin Bean, Andy Jones, Andy Craig, Rob Black O'Hara, Jason Warns, Mitsuyama, Chris Foles, Frodo and L, The Slow Norris, Terry Howard, Full of Hope, and Rolo. They all have access to our Discord channel. Their name called out in the credits and visualize in the ending scene. Have an idea for a wheel piece? You can send it to us at argpresents at mail.com.